The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. It is sport, as Shakespeare said, to have the engineer hoist by his own petard. The spider that becomes enmeshed in its own web. The boomerang that returns to strike its hurler. Yes, these are the delicious ironies of life. Or death. And these are also the unusual, the striking, the dramatic examples. Much too commonplace are the multitude of little, unseen, unknown traps most of us are constantly setting to ensnare ourselves. Peter, you have to see reason. Reason? Reason is all on my side. Well, you should know. The sheriff and the others, they've decided to bribe you. I have never in my life let money influence my decision. Go back and tell them it's a waste of time. But they don't intend to offer you money. (laughs) What else could they use for a bribe? Me. mystery drama, The Elixir of Death, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Paul Hecht. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. get away from it all. From the rat race, the hurly-burly, the hustle-bustle. How many times have you heard someone say that? How many times have you said it yourself? Well, Peter Nevins has been saying it quite often, as a matter of fact. And everyone who knows him kind of smiles tolerantly. Peter Nevins, a brilliant young physician with a fantastically promising career, Peter is going to cast this all aside for the life of a country doctor. You actually seriously intend to resign? That's what it says on the paper. But why? Because I've had it. Had what? The rat race. I'm fed up with it. I want to live. Live? I want to breathe clean, pure air. I want to know the woods and the mountains. Ah, that's nonsense. Dr. Stern, I respect your ability as a man of medicine, but... come off it. You made your choice long ago. What choice? You could have chosen something easy, pleasant, but you didn't. You chose medicine. You mean doctors don't have a right to live? Ah, why are we indulging in this nonsense? You're a very special doctor, and you know it. I don't know anything of the kind. Why are you angry? I don't like it here. Here? In the hospital? The the city here. The hopeless, helpless mess that life has become. But here is where you're needed. This can't be you talking. You know the level I'm talking about. You get something more than a headache or a bellyache and you have to send that patient into a clinic for sophisticated treatment. What are you going to do out there, anyhow? Fish. Take pictures. Write poetry. Ah, why didn't you say so in the first place? Uh, Nobody ever listens to me. I've been saying it all along. Oh, look, Doctor, I like the work here, but I just can't stand the life. The life? I think you should see George Harris. I don't need a psychiatrist. Everybody needs a psychiatrist. But take take the word city itself. The Greeks have a word for it, polis. We live in a metropolis, which means the mother city. The word police, it literally means the force of the city, you see? No. Politics, the affairs of the city. What does all this nonsense have to do with medicine? Everything. Because this is what life here is all about. Here we express our lives in rituals. We live by artificial rules. Who aren't all rules artificial? People who live close to the soil, to nature, to to the elements, find greater and more genuine rewards in life. Ah, you think so? Dr. Stern, my mind is made up. Ah, Well, come to dinner tonight. It's probably the last decent meal you'll ever have. That's That's exactly what I mean. This chauvinism of yours, this belief that once you leave the city behind you, all you encounter is barbarism. Where exactly is this this place where you intend to vegetate for the rest of your life? It is high in the mountains. It's 50 miles from anything that could be called a town. I give you six months. Good morning, 
Doctor. Oh, uh, good morning, Miss Renshaw. Oh, you can't do that up here, Doctor. Do what? Call people by their last name. Well, I don't know your first name. It's Carolyn. Oh, mine's Peter. Oh, no, we have to call you Doctor. Why? Oh, I suppose it's one of the rules. <laughs> That's funny. I just had a talk with a man before I left, and I contended that there was less artificiality and fewer rules in the country. Mm, that's not true. We have more rules here than anywhere. Oh, I can't believe that. Oh, you'll find out. Mm. How'd you like my sign? Mm, very neat. Peter Curtis Nevin, M.D. You know that's what I always dreamed of doing? Personally hanging up my shingle? Oh, I'm sure you must have done that before. Uh, I had an office in a building made of glass and granite. My sign was inserted into place for me. <laughs> You'll be the first doctor this village has ever had. You see, already I own the distinction. I'd like to ask you a question. Go ahead. Whatever made you decide to leave a wonderful job in the big city and come here to this godforsaken place? <laughs> I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, it just doesn't make sense. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, the tendency is for most folks around here to move out. <laughs> but you're the first within recent memory to move in. You mean, you mean people actually leave here? Oh, every chance they get. Would you leave too? I can't very well. Not anymore. Oh, uh, I'm afraid I don't understand. It's eight o'clock. I'll be late for classes. Oh, that's right. I remember now. You're a school teacher. Doctor, I am the school teacher. <laughs> Miss and Doc. Yes, well, I didn't want to hit anything anyhow. To me, this is just an excuse for a walk through the woods. How do you like it up here so far? Oh, it's fine. Just fine. Sure it's active enough for you? Sheriff, sure. a man likes to have time for himself just to think and relax. Ah, you get a chance to do plenty of that up here. Mind if I ask you a question? No, no, not at all. I bet I know what it is. Do you? Oh, yes. You probably want to know why I left a very lucrative situation in the city to come out here to the boondocks. Now... I confess, crossed my mind. Hmm. Well, maybe I want the simple life. Well, life ain't simple no place anymore. I worked under a great physician, but it wasn't really medicine. Well, I, I don't really follow that. Well, you see, Sheriff, one treated people, and one could cure the illness, but not the disease. Now I'm lost. The illness, in most cases, is a particular bug. So you kill that with a drug, or you cut away whatever that bug is infected or destroyed. But the disease itself, remains because it was created by society. Yeah, well, what disease is this? <laughs> Look, what good is it to tell people that a balanced diet is vital if they have neither the education to understand you nor the means to afford it? How can you tell a man he simply must keep off his feet when the only job he can get forces him to stand eight hours a day? And, and, and that's what bothered you? It was too much, too complicated. I just felt my life was slipping away. It'll slip away from you here, too, Doc. <laughs> yes, but not so fast. Uh, oh, by the way, you got yourself a new job. You're the health officer. Health officer? Well, we got to have one. We've been using doctors from over at Selwyn's Corners in Centerville. But now that we got one of our own, might as well throw the business his way. Oh, what business? Well, the pay ain't much, but then the job ain't much either. Let's see, uh, got to inspect Ed's Market and Shorty's Diner. That's all the food places we got. And the bottling plant. Well, that doesn't sound very arduous. Well, you just know Ed and Shorty run clean places. As for the plant, you won't find more modern machinery any place. What about the plant, sir? Well, it's the lifeblood of this little town. That's where the famous Elixir Vita comes from. Well, I'm ashamed to say I never heard of it. Oh, <laughs> you better get with it, Doc. That's your part of this town. It's your bread and butter, too. It's, uh... It's a gourmet water. A what? It's the only way I can describe it. it comes up out of the spring. Some town property. The town owns the bottling plant. And since you're a taxpayer here now, you've got a piece of it, too. Oh, and it's one of these spring waters that's sold for people to drink? Huh? Uh, only if you're rich. Oh. I mean, that's an expensive bottle, Doc. Oh, right, right. Mostly, it's not for drinking. Well... If you don't drink it... Now, it's used for cooking, for mixing drinks. You're kidding. Now, well, between you and me, it's a snob thing. Then you've got these great gourmet cooks, and you say to them, you can ruin all them expensive items in that recipe with ordinary tap water. And this bottling plant sustains the economy of the village, huh? This plant nourishes every one of us, Doc. Huh. 
Uh, well, what kind of water is it, sir? You want the truth? To me, it tastes the same as any other kind. Well, I'd like to try it. <laughs> now that you've got yourself this new job and you're making extra money, uh, you can afford to buy yourself some. May I propose a toast? Oh, of course. To a successful and happy practice in our fair little village. Well, I'll drink to that. Why did you order Elixir Vita? Well, it cost as much as a cocktail. I had to try it. Hmm? What do you think? Well, it's rather pleasant. Do you like it? Well, it doesn't taste like anything at all to me. Tell me, are you glad you came here? Oh, yes. Yes, I feel completely at home now. You're not bored? Bored? Huh. The kind of sunsets you have up here. The lakes, the woods, the air. Hmm. Well, that'll last a while. You, you happen to mention that, that people leave here. Why? Well, after a while, I suppose the sunsets just aren't enough. You said you would leave, too. Mm-hmm. I would, if I could. Well, if that's how you feel... I should have left ten years ago. Why didn't you? My mother wasn't well. Oh, but that could have been an excuse. I probably didn't have the courage. Now it's too late. Oh, it's never too late to do what you want. I wanted to be free to be my own man, so I walked out. I came here. Hmm. You think you can be your own man here? Absolutely. I hope so. What's to stop me? I don't know. But all places are the same. Oh, don't say that. You don't know how different this place is. Different from what? The big city. On the surface, Doctor. Only on the surface. Dr. Stern. Dr. Stern. Peter, when are you ending the foolishness and coming back to work? <laughs> Never. Uh, doctor, did you get the water sample I sent you? Yes, Peter. What is it? Well, I can't tell you right now. Uh, listen, did you isolate a certain substance um, has a kind of alkaline trace? Uh, yes, yes. And I don't know what it is. Oh, uh, you don't, eh? No. I've called in Stecker and Connolly. Mm -hmm. And they also say it's something brand new to them. It defies analysis. Yeah, I couldn't break it down myself, which is why I sent it to you. Of what is this a sample? Oh, it's just, just some water. Well, what are you looking for? <laughs> I am not even sure. Stecker says it looks vaguely like a substance that has found to be lethal when consumed by people who have certain protein allergies. Uh, how's that? But she's not sure. And it's just a wild guess on her part. Yeah. But but the substance you, you found in the sample I sent you, you, you can't identify that at all? No. Nobody can remember coming across it before. Uh, listen, uh, Peter, come back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Stern. Uh, you, uh... You want to see me, Doc? Oh, yes, sir. Come in. Come in, please, Sheriff. Okay. Sheriff, uh, as health officer of this village, uh, I am health officer, am I not? Oh, yes, Doctor. That was made official last week by the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. Well, I may be compelled to make an official decision. You mean you found something out of line? I may have. The, um... The bottling plant, uh, I'm talking about Elixir Vita. Uh, no. No, you can't be. Yes, yeah, Sheriff. We may have to close it down. We may have to close it down. A simple statement. And yet, it can mean financial ruin and economic doom for an entire town. At this point, all we know is that Dr. Peter Nevins has fled to the country in order to find the simple life. What he and we are about to learn when I return shortly with Act Two is that there is no such thing as a simple life. For come. Eric Servita. The elixir, the essence of life. It is supposed to be a delicious aid to the true gourmet. And it is the economic mainstay of an entire town. Is this happy equilibrium about to be upset? And by a man who has always been extremely reluctant to make waves? It appears to be true. 
close the plant down. Well, Sheriff... Well, you can't do that, Doctor. I understand what the plant means to this community. Oh, no, 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 you don't. Without that plant, we don't have a town. You can't do that. Now, look, I didn't say we were going to do it. I said we may have to do it. Why? Because I think there's something in that water. What? I'm not sure. And and what does it do? Well, I'm not sure of that either. Now, let me understand just what you're saying. There may be something in the water, but you don't know what. Is that right? Right. And it may be doing something, but you don't know what that is either. Not yet. And on the basis of that kind of evidence, you want to close down the plant? It's not evidence. It's just a suspicion. That's even worse. You mean you close down the plant on just a suspicion? Well, I... Uh... Doc, you can't even convict a guy for murder if all you got is just plain suspicion. Well, this is a pretty strong suspicion. About what? About something in that water. All right, all right. You're a health officer. And you could close us down if you felt it was your duty. But you'd have to say why. And unless you could do that, we could go to a jury. I know, I know. On the other hand, if there was something wrong with our elixir vita and it harmed folks, we wouldn't want to be responsible. See what I mean? Oh, yes. I see what you mean. Into the fish bite. Well, these are mountain country fish, you know. They're supposed to be highly individualistic. <laughs> <laughs> well, at any rate, it's a beautiful day. Mm. Beautiful lake. Beautiful girl. When are you going to toss it all over and go back to the city? Never. You sure? Positive. The other night, you said this was so different from the city. And I said, only on the surface. You asked how. And I said you'd find out. And I remember I didn't agree with you at all. Mm. You also said in the city you couldn't be your own man. Whereas here... Uh, what brings all this on? The city may have just caught up with you. In what way? In every way. Name one. Intrigue. Intrigue? Up here? Mm. You'd be surprised. Sheriff Blakely took me into his confidence. Oh, Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to use my wiles to worm something out of you. Well, I can't imagine what that could be. Oh, yes, you can. I'm supposed to find out just what it is you know, or think you know, about the elixir Vita. Aha. Uh -huh. And how far will you go to discover the secret? Oh, Peter, I don't know. This thing has acquired a life of its own. We'll just have to see how it develops. I feel like an enemy general in a movie about to be done in by a beautiful spy. You see, there, there is intrigue in this town. And once you dig down deep enough beneath the surface, you may never have left the big city at all. Peter! Wow, hello, come in. When I heard it was you, I couldn't believe it. Morning, Dr. Stern. How did you ever manage to tear yourself away from your busy practice? <laughs> that is a low blow. Ah, and unworthy as well. Forgive me. Has uh, Stecker done the lab work I asked for? Yes. And you must allow me this one little I told you so. Oh, what's that? I told you that if ever you needed anything the least bit sophisticated, you'd have to come running back to civilization. A tiny correction. I'd have to come running back here because civilization is where I am now. I figured it out, Peter. You figured what out? The whole thing. Do you know the answer to what you're doing? You're afraid. Oh, what am I afraid of? Medicine. <laughs> I love medicine. Maybe I should say... The human aspect of it. But medicine is concerned with humanity. Yes, yes. And it's also practiced by human beings. And some of those human beings had started to scare you. I, I don't follow this. You were a bright young man, Peter. The brightest in your class. You showed the most promise. Well, maybe you feel you haven't lived up to that promise. I never thought about it one way or another. A few years have gone by. You see other bright young men coming up. You're afraid of that. Oh, that's not true. You're afraid to compete. That's why you create this, this fantasy about the country, the purity of the simple life. Well, maybe I just love to fish, the way you love gourmet cooking. Yes, yes, I'm a gourmet cook. 
and I'm a master bridge player, but I'm a doctor. Oh, we're having this argument again. Peter, why are you afraid? Afraid of the city? Look, I came here to say hello, to take you to lunch, and to see if Stecker has got anywhere on my lab work. We've already said hello, and you can't take me to lunch because I'm preparing it here. And about Stecker and your lab work, why don't you ask her? I do not know what this is, Peter. And and you can't guess? You do not come here for guesses. What kind of water is this? Oh, it's just uh, water uh, from a spring. Mm. And you wish to know if you can drink this water? Well, I thought I'd analyze it myself, and when I did, I saw the substance in it that I couldn't identify. What it is, we do not know. Let us call it, um, X. Well, for some reason, one that I can't understand myself, I have a feeling that X is harmful. Is that true? I cannot yet be sure. X reminds me of something. It is not the same thing, but it could be similar. What's that? It could be dangerous for people who suffer from a protein deficiency. Uh, are you, are you sure? No. No. I suspect. Uh, That is all. Can you find out? I can try. Well, how long will it take? Peter, you know how long these things may take. Ten minutes, ten days, ten years, forever. Have some more of this wine. Uh, no, thanks, Doctor. I'm really in a hurry to get back. <laughs> you see how the roles have been reversed? I, the busy city doctor, am relaxed. You, the calm country doctor, are nervous and impatient. I'd like you to understand one thing, doctor. I am happy where I am. For the first time in my life, I know what it is to live, to live through my senses. It's very important to me, doctor. I wish you would see it that way. What do you really want me to understand? <sighs> oh, I'm, I'm not sure the part of medicine that frightens me. You have to tell me what that is. Well, it has nothing to do with anatomy or physiology or surgery or any of the things we study. Then what does it have to do with... I guess you could call it doctoring. I don't follow you. Well, if I'm going to say this, I may need some more of that wine after all. Okay. Doctors practice medicine. Why do we say practice? Why don't we say perform? Surely, after all of our training, we're qualified, aren't we? No. No. We say practice because we hope to learn each time we work with the patient. Practice. Well, we never really know. Well, we're only human. If it were pure science, we'd know, wouldn't we? But we are buffeted about by other factors. What are you driving at? The, the decisions we have to make. Ah, yes. We are faced with difficult decisions. And have you ever asked yourself why? It's because we allow other than medical factors to influence our judgment. You can't practice medicine in a vacuum, Peter. Yes. Is, is that what you're beginning to find out out there in the utopia? <laughs> Thanks for the lunch, Doc. And the wine. Ah, Peter, you belong in the city. Don't try to fight it. Whatever it is you've got in your system right now, get rid of it and come back home. My home is up there. I... I hope... What do you hope? I hope it doesn't destroy you. Well, how does it feel to be a hero? I never thought about it one way or the other. Look, why don't we uh, step outside for a breath of fresh air? Huh? As they say, you're the doctor. Nice of you folks to give me a party. Well, everybody wanted to meet the new doctor. I don't seem to be getting much work. It's a healthy town. <laughs> you can't have everything. Carolyn, why did you stay? Remember I told you it just worked out that way? Oh, yes. Well, I'm glad you did. Why? Because I think I may have fallen in love with you. Well, that should make my job easier. <laughs> what job? My, uh, Mata Hari thing. You know, most folks here don't know about that conversation you had with the sheriff about the water. Oh, you know, the elixir vita. Mm. But the few of us who do are scared stiff. I know. But I... But, but what? As a doctor, I feel I really had no choice. No choice? Oh, 
Peter, tell me what you... My decision simply has to be to close down the plant. But do you realize that if you close down the plant, you destroy the entire town? I know. I've taken all the facts into consideration. But the right thing to do is to close the plant. How quickly we come to realize that right and wrong are really relative matters. Once we get out into that hard, cold world, how soon we perceive the incredibly complex web of conflicting interests that surround each act we perform. How rapidly we learn that there are two sides to each story. Well, that's life. And that's also the third act, which I shall bring here in just a few moments. greatest realists once said, you can't make an omelet without breaking eggs. And we have here a Dr. Nevins who, figuratively, is going to break some eggs, simply because it's a matter of duty. The problem is, he's talking to one of the eggs right now. You're going to close down our bottling plant? Why? Because I suspect something harmful in the elixir. What? I don't know yet. But if you can't be sure, why should you close the plant? It's possible that there could be danger. And also possible that there isn't any. Yes. And so, until we find out... You order the place shut down. Look, it's entirely possible that these suspicions I have are unfounded. And then, the plant can open up again. The plant can never open up again. Why not? Once it receives a clean bill of health... The damage will have been done. People will never have confidence in it again. Carolyn, I understand. No, you don't understand. This town will be wiped out. My mother and my father, they're old. And everything they own is tied up in that elixir. But there, there isn't a family in this town that... The right thing to do... The right thing to do for whom? I wish... Oh... I wish I really knew what to do. Oh, Peter. Are you happy here? Yes. Do you want to stay? Of course. Well, you won't be able to if you close the plant. That should be obvious. I know. Everybody in this town will shun you as if you were a leper. Because I told the truth. And you? Me? Will you also shun me? Yes, I think so. I told you I loved you. Yes, I know. And the reason I told you... I was very sure... That I I knew, I just knew you felt the same way about me. Do you? Yes. And he would still side against me. Yes. But I don't want to be in love with a fanatic, a zealot. <laughs> Is that how you see me? Oh, that's what you'll be. Oh, Carolyn. We've been bottling Elixir Vita for 80 years. There's never been any kind of suspicion about it whatsoever. But that doesn't mean to say... Peter, there's such a thing as simple justice. You're innocent until you're proven guilty. Give Elixir a chance. Put on your shirt, Doctor. What's the verdict, Doctor? You need a doctor, you come back to the city. You mean there are no doctors in the nearby town? All right, all right. Am I... Am I all right? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Bit run down, some protein deficiency. Oh, I don't get very much sleep. You mean the country air, yeah, it's all a fake? I have nightmares. Huh. What's bothering you? <laughs> I wish I knew. You leave here, you think you've discovered a garden of Eden? And... It is, it is, in many respects. I found a girl... A girl you could have found anywhere. I have found a lovely, peaceful community. Friendly, happy people. And nature. Nature is gone from your life in the city. A garden of Eden. But in every garden of Eden, there has to be a snake. <laughs> What's yours? Who says there's a snake? What else has been keeping you awake nights? Come home, Pete. You keep asking me to come home, and I keep telling you that... I, I, I just can't. Well, you, you, you talk as if it's something... Terrible. It is. But I was born here, in the southeast section. You you know what that used to be. I used to be one of the worst slums in America. That's where I come from. So do I. Yes. 
Doc, I know... I never told you this before, but... My father just... Disappeared one day. My mother was killed in an accident. And, and one night there was a fire, and I, I couldn't get out of that... That hole they called a the room. The ceiling fell down. It would have killed me, except I was under the bed. And for hours I, I lay there, suffocating and choking. And how I fought to breathe. It was quite by accident that the firemen found me. Nobody thought I would live. Ah, but you did. Yes, and I never forgot it. I can't forget it. Well, do you want to keep savoring? I wanted to make something of myself so I could leave the city, this terrible city, the killer city, and I did. I found a place where I can breathe. So, what's your problem? I don't know. I... I'm not sure. <laughs> I have uh, done the studies, Peter, and this thing we call acts. You know what it is, Dr. Stecker? No. But I know what it does. Yes? It can be harmful to people who suffer from protein deficiency. How harmful? That would depend on the individual. Uh -huh. You know that, Peter. Yeah. It could result in mild discomfort for some, to acute symptoms, and in rare cases, even death. Then there is a danger in this water. For the most part, a remote danger. But it cannot be disregarded. I, I, I still don't follow you, Doctor. For certain people, Sheriff, this water could be dangerous, even lethal. Well, how come there's never been any complaint? We have experimental data to prove there may be a danger in the elixir for people who have a protein deficiency. That's first I ever heard. I'll just have to close the plant. Now, Peter, you you got to understand... All right, all right, Sheriff. There is a way out. It's a compromise. The town will take whatever it can get. Good. Now, on each label, we'll print the warning. Dangerous for people with... No, 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 no. We can't take that. Why not? It'll kill us. You put something like that on the label, who's going to buy it? Now, why can't we wait till we're sure? Now, just take a few days, Peter, and think about it. Think about it. <laughs> Peter? Uh, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> I must have dozed off. Oh, I don't know. You suggest a ride. I agree. You suggest we park. It's all right with me. And then you just fall asleep. <laughs> I must really be exciting company. No, no, no. It's not that. I... Just a little bit out of sorts, I guess. You know, that must have been a harrowing experience. What was Fire. Fire? When you were a boy. How did you know about that? You talk in your sleep. I, I wouldn't make that admission in public. After all, I'm not supposed to find that out till after we're married. You called for help. You couldn't breathe. You, you were terrified. Yes. And you kept saying the word city. City. The city. Is that why you hate the city? Because of that fire? No, no, the fire was... It was just the climax of it. My mother, she and my father had come to the city from the farm. <laughs> they thought they could get rich. Mm -hmm. Instead, things turned into a nightmare, and my mother blamed the city for all her troubles. That's why I can't live in the city anymore. You may have to. Why? Because if you close the plant... I'm not, I'm not closing the plant. All I propose is Whatever that... you put on the label will amount to the same thing. Carolyn, there's proof. How conclusive. Oh, well, you can look at it in a number of ways. I, I have a protein deficiency myself. It's a hangover from my childhood. So you don't have to use the elixir. But there are unsuspecting people. Very well, Peter. Theoretically, you're in the right. Now... Let me tell you what happened last night. My mom and dad, the sheriff, the select men, they held a, a kind of private meeting about you. About me? Mm-hmm. What to do about you? Well, they, they didn't say it in so many words, but it was decided to offer you a bribe. Money? Hmm. Not as blatant as that. Since you're an important member of the community now... You should own a larger share of the bottling plant. Oh, if anybody tries... They won't. They soon thought it was foolish. Well, one thing I can tell you, I can't be bribed. 
But you are, Peter. You are being bribed. Oh. By this life. This kind of existence you've always longed for. The kind of town you always pictured. Even by me. For some reason, I... I'm the kind of girl you always wanted. If you insist on destroying the elixir, you lose all of it. That's the bribe, Peter. Yes, yes, that's the bribe. And you have to decide whether or not you'll take it. Would you come back to the city with me, Carolyn? Could you go back to the city, Peter? I... I think more time is needed to form a definite conclusion after all this. There's no proof it ever killed anybody. Oh, Peter, darling. Hello. You're early. Dinner isn't quite ready. Mm, that divine aroma. <laughs> Carolyn, I didn't know you could cook like this. Hello, Peter. Ah, Dr. Stern. I can't. Dr. Stern decided to come up early for the wedding, and he insisted on preparing dinner. Oh, he's a genius. <laughs> I always really wanted to be a chef. <laughs> ah, Peter, you're not looking well. well. I'll stay a couple of days and see that you eat properly. Oh, I don't know when I've ever enjoyed such a splendid dinner. We'll have to invite the doctor often, Peter. And when I can't come, I'll give you some of my recipes. <laughs> Will you gentlemen excuse me? I'll bring in the coffee. So, are you happy? I'll settle. Dr. Stern, have you ever been bribed? I've never accepted money that... No, 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 no. I don't mean my money. Uh, well, yes, by the prospect of position. Reputation. I see. All of us, whoever we are, whatever we are, can be bribed by something. Mm. I know. What all this means is that you have already taken a bribe. Isn't that so? That's right. What? A way of life. Was it worth it? Oh, yes. What did you have to give up? Just, uh, just a little bit of integrity. Then it wasn't worth it. Oh, it was a tiny, insignificant bit, Doctor. The trouble with integrity is that it doesn't come in bits and pieces. It's either all or nothing. I had to do it, Doctor. I couldn't give all this up. Well... Well, what? We're doing what we command our patients never to do after a meal. Get excited. You know, Dr. Stern... Tonight's dinner was the most delicious meal you ever cooked. <laughs> you know something? I agree with you. Carolyn helped me with something I never heard of. It's marvelous you could actually taste the difference in the soup. The soup? Ah, uh, the soup was never better. It's something you people bottle up here. What? What are you talking about? It's that water, that, what do you call it, that elixir vita. Doctor, doc, you mean... You prepared the dinner with Elixir Vita? I always considered myself a gourmet, and here I'd never even heard of... But you should know all about it. You've been having it every time Carolyn well, made dinner for you. I, I, I... Imagine, back home, I buy the most expensive ingredients, and then I use ordinary water. It just doesn't make sense. <laughs> Carolyn! Carolyn! Peter, is something the matter? Hi, darling. All the, all the time I've been having dinner here, here at your house... Have you been cooking with Alexia Vita? Of course. You mean, you mean I've been ingesting that stuff? Ingesting? Well, that's kind of a strange word to use with Alexia Vita. Now just tell me, tell me the well, truth. Every meal you've had since you've come to this village, wherever you've eaten it, contains Alexia Vita. What? Well, we all use it. That's why the food tastes so good. No wonder. No wonder I'm starting to feel like this. Peter? Peter, are you all right? Dr. Stern? No, no, no. He looks a little bit tired. <laughs> Run down, but I think he's all right. No, no, doctor. If you examined me, you'd see that I am on my way to severe illness. <laughs> Maybe death. What are you saying? <laughs> but I'm fortunate. I can save myself. I know. But the others, how many others will suffer and never know why? 
until one day, Peter. one day. Peter. I'm sorry, Carolyn. I am very sorry, but as the health officer and as a doctor, I really have no choice. And if that means the sky will fall, well, let it. And when you look at a bottle of Elixir Vita, you might notice a warning sentence on the label. Should not be consumed by persons with protein deficiency. And you know something? The sky didn't fall. Things went on as usual. Peter married Carolyn, and everybody's happy. This story was designed especially for those of you who complain we don't have enough happy endings. I'll have other happy tidings in just a few moments. It's all relative, the physical and even the mental. Something that can nourish me might destroy you. We're all so different, so contrary, so inexplicable, and so unpredictable. And this is certainly cause for joy and great celebration. For it is these human and not-so-human foibles that give us the material to enchant you here seven times each week. Our cast included Paul Hecht, E.V. Juster, and Robert Dryden. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. The Chamber of Commerce dinner was long and tedious. I was sent home early with the lieutenant governor's wife. But not before Lewis had informed me that John, contrary to his normal habits, had been drinking quite a bit. But he assured me that it would be all right and that he would make sure he got safely home. I was sitting at my dressing table, taking off my makeup, when suddenly, impossibly, Lewis was beside me, visibly shaken and frantic. Deborah. How the devil did you get in here? It doesn't matter for the moment. I'm here to tell you to lock your door when I leave. And whatever you do, don't let John come in. And remember the pistol I gave you. What are you talking about? He's found out about you and Nicholas. How? Never mind how. When I left him, he was loading his hunting rifle. For heaven's sake, when I leave, lock your door. Are you suggesting that I should be afraid of John, the most... Debbie, he is not himself. He's out of his mind. He... Good Lord, here he comes. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. This is House A. House A's owner pays an annual percentage rate of around 18% on his second trustee loan, which is the typical cost at most companies. This is House B. House B's owner pays an annual percentage rate of only 13.68% on his second trustee loan, which is the typical cost at Reliable Mortgage Corporation. That's because at Reliable, the interest rate is lower, the commission is lower, and you get more time to fully repay your loan, and there are no balloon payments. As you can see, there is a big difference in second trust deed loans. That's why the federal government has given you a foolproof way of comparing the overall cost of any loan, the annual percentage rate. The lower the rate, the lower the cost. 13.68% is lower than 18%. Call Reliable Mortgage Corporation, the brokers who know it's good business to give you the facts and more money for your money. First and second trust deed loans from $1,000 to $50,000. Find reliable on your white or yellow pages. This is K and X, Los Angeles. The time is ten o'clock.